Hello and welcome to Down the Scope. In this video we're going to be going through the nervous system, reproductive system and notochord of the amphioxus. Starting off with the nervous system, if we remind ourselves of the overall anatomy of the amphioxus, it has a, a dorsal spinal cord running all the way down the length of its body. Looking at the gross anatomy, the only remarkable thing about this structure is that it has a cranial swelling, which is probably analogous to the brain of vertebrates. However, microscopically and functionally, the dorsal spinal cord is very different all the way along its length. In order to try and work out which bits are which on the slide, I've had to look at several different papers and piece together a, a brief overall uh, look at the anatomy. However, you shouldn't underestimate the complexity of the nervous system of an amphioxus. And if you'd like more information, you can go to the original sources. For example, Quentin Bone's original 1960 paper looking at the anatomy. However, there are also a couple of recent reviews, such as Helmut Wicht's uh, The Nervous System of Amphioxus, uh, which was published in the Canadian Journal of Zoology in 2005. So zooming in on the dorsal spinal cord on this section, we can see that there are two overall types of cell within the central nervous system. Those consist of the glial system, which is there to support, and the neurons, which form the actual nerves and axons which go to the peripheral nervous system. So the main component of the glial system within the dorsal spinal cord are the ependymal cells, which we can see lining the central canal. The nuclei are these dark, small dark spots, for example, these ones here. However, what we can't see is that these cells are extending processes which cross the parenchyma of the dorsal uh, spinal cord and reach the periphery and then further extend processes and these are represented by these ventral lateral glial bundles. If we look now at the peripheral nervous system, we have a, uh, a nerve branching off from the dorsal spinal cord. And within this nerve, we can start to see nuclei. It's much clearer if we go down to this section down here. So we can see lines of nu cell nuclei coming along this nerve. And these are thought to be similar to the Schwann cells uh, in vertebrates, which are there to myelinate the peripheral nervous system. But the nervous system in amphioxus is, or the peripheral nerves in amphioxus are not myelinated. Uh, so these cells will just be providing some kind of support system. If we move on to the neurons. Now, of course, the neurons in amphioxus are extremely complicated, uh, so I won't even attempt to identify all the different subtypes. Uh, they often extend processes across the central canal, and I think this is one here if I turn on the annotation. Within the red circle, uh, this looks like a neuron that's extending a process across the central canal. Most of the neurons that we can see here are going to be retzius bipolar cells, which are contributing uh, sensory fibres to the dorsal nerve, which we can see leaving the spinal cord here. If we come over to this section here, I've identified a, a neuron here within this blue uh, circle. These retzius bipolar cells, as I mentioned, are sensory and will be co contributing fibres uh, which go to the skin and, and, and sense uh, changes in temperature or, or pressure around the skin. Another kind of neuron which is often talked about in, in terms of uh, amphioxus neuroanatomy is the road cell or the giant motor neuron. I couldn't find any of these in uh, the sections on this slide, but we can see their axons which flow down on either side of the dorsal spinal cord. So the axons are these large circles here, and you can see that it's bilaterally symmetrical and that we have a, a bundle here, which is replicated on this side, but also on this side, there's a similar bundle of axons here. And then we have a, a large median giant fiber down the middle. This median giant fiber uh, originates at the most anterior road cell and passes all the way down the 
the body of the Amphioxus. And these bundles of axons have been given names. For example, this is the anterior road axons and, and these are the posterior road axons. These road cells are going to be playing some part in the sw swimming mechanism of the Amphioxus. So if we move on to the notochord now, which is just below the dorsal spinal cord. Remember, this is a solid rod of tissue that extends all the way from the front of the ax uh, Amphioxus all the way down to the black. In terms of the general anatomy of the notochord, it has a dense, uh, well-developed sheath which surrounds it. You can see it in this, this blue tissue here. And then within the notochord itself, we can see lamellae or uh, sheets of tissue which are formed by these cells here. So here we can see the cells of the notochord. We have a, a nucleus with a nucleolus in the center, uh, but we can't see any of the cell borders. The cells of the notochord are actually a kind of muscle cell, which means that they play some role in the motility of the amphioxus. And it's been shown that the notochord's mechanical properties will change in response to nervous stimulation. That makes it, this makes it very different to uh, the notochord in um, vertebrates, which has a role in organising the, the embryologic development uh, by releasing signals that determine tissue differentiation. And if we have a look at this scanning electron microscope from a 2006 paper, we can see the same striations that you would uh, expect from muscle in a vertebrate. However, the, the, the muscle in the notochord of the amphioxus actually has mixed properties of both smooth and striated muscle of vertebrates. If we move on now to the reproductive system, these sections are taken from a female amphioxus and we can see the two ovaries here in this section as large organs on either side of the pharynx or, or the digestive system. If we zoom on and in on this ovary, we can see the overall structure. We have the atrial epithelium here, which is this layer of small black nuclei and connective tissue here. And then there's another layer of epithelium on the inside of the ovary, which you can just make out as these small thin black nuclei and a few lines of, of blue connective tissue covering the ovary itself. The gap between the atrial epithelium and the epithelium covering, covering the ovaries is called the gonocele, uh, and it forms a central cavity where the, where the eggs will be shed and eventually leave the amphioxus via the atria pore. The size and structure of the ovaries will depend on the maturation of the egg cells. Unlike in mammalian ovaries, where if you have a look at a section of ovary, you'll get various different oocytes at, at, at different stages of development. Because the amphioxus uh, rely on external fertilization, uh, it's beneficial for them to release all of their eggs at the same time. Uh, so all of the oocytes here will be at the same stage of maturation. And as you can tell by the size of these cells, these are pretty mature oocytes. So I've annotated one of the oocytes with the structures that you can see. This large structure in, in the middle, which is slightly vesicular, so all stippled, there's a lot of white space with small brown granules is the nucleus, so where all of the DNA is stored. And then in the center of the nucleus, we have this uh, larger, darker staining little circle, which is the nucleolus. Uh, this is where ribosomes are made from specific sections of the chromosomes, uh, which is why it's much darker staining than the rest of the nucleus where all of the other chromosomes are. If we look at the cytoplasm of the oocyte, uh, it's filled up with these yolk granules 
uh, which are very dense and contain a glycoprotein, which is used as an energy store. Around the edge of the oocyte, we have these lighter staining granules, which are the cortical granules, which perform a very important function. When a sperm fertilizes the egg, these granules will bind to the cell membrane and change its properties to prevent any further sperm from binding and, and causing problems. So that's a brief summary of the nervous and reproductive system of the Amphioxus. Uh, if you want more details of some of the other structures that we can see on this slide, for example, uh, the digestive system, uh, you can check out the other videos in this series about uh, Amphioxus anatomy. Otherwise, you can head over to the website and check out some of the other slides that we have, for example, the earthworms, uh, which have accompanying videos as well. If you've enjoyed this video, you can consider subscribing as well uh, and uh, keep on checking out the website for when I upload new slides. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time you decide to tune into Down the Scope.